Hello, welcome to Endor Engage Model Railway. I'm Jonathan. Quite a while ago, I was thinking about semaphore signals for Endor and decided that I'd like moving signals with an LED. I had a ratio plastic kit, but it looked like adding an LED to it would be beyond my current skills, so I ordered a DAPOR motorized signal. Back then, Endor was very much nomadic and just on its door. There was no frame or permanent location for it, so there was no way I could install these motorized signals on it. They're deeper than the door. I bought the DAPOL signal with the intention of taking it apart and removing its built-in motor, but reconnecting its rod and LED to something else. Months went by, and in that time Endor got its permanent home and frame, so it's now plausible to install these signals to it as they are. I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. Signals will need to be one of the last things that go onto the layout, because otherwise I'm just going to end up accidentally breaking them as I lean over to make the rest of the layout. But I decided I'd like to test whether or not it works. I think the instructions are very clear about the input requirements. I chose to test via DC from a 9 volt battery. It can also be powered by AC, which means that it must be able to rectify the current, but the instructions say that red is positive and black is negative and that correct connection is essential, so I decided not to experiment with doing it the other way around. On AC it says it needs up to 14 volts. That's pretty close to the 13 volts that my GageMaster DCC system outputs. But although the direction of the current alternates to form the DCC signal, its voltage is constant, whereas conventional AC voltage varies in a sine wave. So over time, for any particular voltage rating, the DCC system is going to deliver more power than conventional AC. So I decided not to try that for the power source. It might be fine, since the peak voltage is still going to be no more than that of conventional AC, but I haven't been brave enough to try it. The instructions talk about using momentary switches to operate the signal, and they're very clear that power must not be connected to the yellow wires. It doesn't explicitly say so, it's implied from the use of a momentary contact switch, but the signal's movement is triggered by the two yellow cables being connected to each other briefly. This was easy to test without a switch. I ordered a push-button momentary switch from eBay that also lights up. That didn't come with any documentation, but on eBay its description said the LED can be powered with anything from 9 volts to 30 volts, which suits this layout because my LED power source is 12 volts. I assumed that the terminals labelled plus and minus were for LED power, so connected the signal's yellow cables to the other two terminals. That worked. I then connected the LED, being careful to avoid an accidental connection of the yellow wires with the power supply. With the crocodile clips they came quite close. It all worked very nicely. There's no mention of electrically reading from the signal which position it's in. If it's been triggered, then whatever is controlling it will need to assume the signal successfully changed and will need to track for itself what state the signal should be in. No doubt there are many products around that can do that, but I haven't looked into any of that yet. I'd quite like to have some kind of logical interlocking eventually to mimic the effect of mechanical interlocking, but to start with, I'll be content with purely manual switching. With my intention now to use this signal as is, I needed to make sure I had space for it. I didn't make the track plan with below board protrusions in mind, but happily there's just enough space between the outer loop and the door's outer frame. I don't really want to drill a proportionally large hole through that frame. I think it would severely weaken the door, which I still want to be able to lift off the underframe if the need arises. I think this signal looks great, and this one works well, but it was relatively expensive and I've seen that other people have had quality problems with them. If the quality control is anything like what I've experienced of Dapol's locomotives, then I feel that buying more of these would be a gamble. I've still got the ratio kit to build, so I may yet see if I can motorize and illuminate that. I think other people have done it, so I'm sure it's possible, but whether or not I can do it is a different matter. We'll see. That's all for now. Bye bye!